Y'all know what it is. Let me get some video here. Where's my lighting? You are now tuned in to the network, bro. Live live episode number 68. 68 episodes deep. Y'all know what it is. Today we're doing port security. Really simple topic from the CCNA exam. I got two streams going, seriously? How? Beware. Let me see. Let me see how, you, how I did that. Hmm. Give me a second here. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me delete this one. Thank you for pointing that out. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Delete How this do I one? delete that one? How the, what the heck? Hmm. Well, give me a second here. Content. Nice. Let me delete this one right here. Edit. More actions. Delete forever. I just stand. Delete forever. Man, appreciate you for t uh, for pointing that out. It's smooth. I didn't even realize that. How did I get two live streams going, man? It's like the goddamn Matrix up here. No. Uh, let me get these uh, bra buttons going on here. For this lab, we only need two two devices. One router, one switch. We're going to uh, review a concept called port security. Basically, it's a way to secure our ports. How? You define the definition with the definition, right? Yes, you're securing the ports. Basically, you know what the ports are, right? Little holes on the on the device, right? The switch or a router, right? Let me see if I can grab one real quick. Huh? You know the damn the damn little hole, right? The thing you put the plug in, right? We can secure those ports, right? Because if we have a device that's, let's say, for example, private per perfect example, today at work, uh, we have these labs that are being reimaged, right? But they didn't have they they used to do it through the Wi-Fi, but um. It couldn't be done this time because they took down the Wi-Fi. So they were like, we need to do it on landline, right? So I had to, yes, put a switch in the middle of a lab and cable all these computers up to the switch. And we we had them get them uh, get them reimaged that way. Well, guess what? There's some empty ports on that switch. What if we have a student that just walk in the lab like, hmm, maybe I can figure out a way to hack into the system and just plug up his laptop into the hole, into the port of the, of the switch and then gain access to our network. Well, one way we can circumvent that problem is with... <laughs> Port security, you guessed it. Today's lab is going to be lab number ninety-nine for on page uh, port, page four twenty-nine. Configuring switch access port security. This is the lab guide we use. It's called one hundred one lab Cisco CCNA version four. You're going to get a copy of this from one hundred one labs.net, or there's a link in the description box below. Uh, this is a great book. Y'all know how much I love this book. I, I keep harping on and on about how much I love that book, man. But uh, S move, shout out to S move BK in the house for pointing out that I got two live streams. That's like two times the bras, <laughs> two times my dad jokes, and uh, just a lot. I know that's, that's just too much for y'all to digest. We got Cisco to the guy in the building. What's going on, Cisco to the guy? Y'all check him check, check him out. Uh, Joseph B. Nah, no VRP today, man. You want to go? You want uh? You want some VRP review? Go check in the archives, man. I got a bunch of videos. Well, not a bunch. I got a I got a video on VRP. We did some from this book, actually, and we did some from, uh, it was when I was experimenting with the whole uh, live streaming thing. It was on a Sunday, I remember. Matter of fact, is Paul B in the building? No, we ain't got Paul B in there, but uh, he was barbecuing <laughs> while I was, we, we was uh, reviewing HSRP and VRRP and the rest of those FHRPs, right? But uh, again, go ahead and drag and drop two routers, actually, one router, one switch, I'm going to bring up the uh, topology so y'all can see this in case you ain't got the book. Y'all know some of y'all students wait to the, uh, <laughs> get through half the semester, see how far you can get through without the book, right? Well, it's all good because I get y'all the topology anyway and uh, we kind of go over it together. Let me get a copy of this, put it in paint and uh, we'll see if we can knock out two lads. Although I got my antsy little daughter over there in the, in the bedroom today. Uh, she want to play, 
But I said, yeah, I, I got to do some teaching. You, we, we, we done enough playing today. Uh, let me paste, paste that bad boy. So just drag and drop two devices, just like that. This is a real simple lab. I, I know this is a little too simple for Joseph over there. Joseph is waiting on route redistribution and, and uh, goddamn uh, route reflectors and, and route aggregate, BGP, route aggregation and stuff like that. Yeah, we still doing the CCNA stuff on this channel, all right? <laughs> We keeping it simple. Don't worry. We'll get to the CCMP level stuff, man. Just chill out. We got Dave W in the building. Yeah, appreciate that, man. I did have two streams, man. How annoying could be that? Two network bros in y'all face. <laughs> he said another company is trying to steal me for 118k. Oh wow, that's what's up, Cisco. To the guy, man. Man, I don't know. I would take it, man. But this position comes with a security clearance, which I think is more valuable. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's true, though. So it's it's not it's not all about the money. Y'all listen to Cisco to the guy, man. You know, sometimes you'll give up a position uh, that pays more, and it, it just might be, just might be better for you in the long run. Like in his case, he has a security clearance that can open up a lot more doors for you, as opposed to maybe you know twenty k extra k in your on your salary, right? So those are the couple of things that you gotta you know take into consideration when you're doing a job hunt. So let's. I don't know if y'all can read that or not. Let me make this just a little bit wider and repaste that because I don't, I don't like the way that came out. I don't, I don't like the way that came out. That looks a little... That looks a, and I think we're going to use the same topology for both labs. I'm going to try to knock out both labs. Although I said I was going to try to put her to bed by 9 o'clock. That almost never happens. She'd be giving me little puppy eyes. Can we just stay for one more episode or play a little bit more? No! Let me get this red going get the brush going and I think uh, I do have a router and a switch uh, uh, plugged up let's see we definitely got router one going because I hear that thing loud man y'all know I like using hardware um, said, that's my dog been knowing him for a while that's what's up man uh, what else he said 104 that's it yeah Exactly, got that. Oh, you got the new job at the Air Force Base. That's what's up, man. Congrats to Cisco to the guy, man. That's what's up, man. A 104K, that's a that's a good salary, man. But uh, like you said, uh, it's it's not all it's not always about the salary, man. That security clearance is gonna come a long way. So I got Switch One powered up right here, and again, go ahead and power him up, uh, cable him up to Router One, just like that. Where's Router One? He's Router One right there, and. Uh, let me go ahead and drag and drop that bad boy. And I think he's powered up too, right? Oh, come on, Router 1. Oh, no, I didn't power him up. The network, bro, is uh, a little discombobulated right now. But y'all know what it is. Uh, I always give it about 10 minutes for for some people to kind of straggle into class late and stuff like that. I used to do the same thing too in college. Just kind of like drag my feet while I walk in. Is this out of the lab out of 101 labs book yes it is Cisco to the guide yep this guide right here 101 labs Cisco CCNA the fourth version of this book um we're gonna once we knock this out we're on lab number again lab number 99 so one more and we'll be at lab number 100 but guess what there's about 15 to 20 trouble uh bonus labs towards the end so I guess that's a misprint or is just a False advertisement. There's actually 120 labs in this book, so um, we can just have a little bit more fun before we move on to the CCMP level. Uh, as Router One boots up, there was something else I wanted to either tell y'all or uh, bring up. What else could I do here? I know I usually like to talk shit for the first couple minutes. Uh, do I have that over here? Probably not. Uh, keep it techie. So yeah, router one is booting up. What are you guys using? Are you using even, even, even G or uh, GNS3? All right, so yeah, router one looks like he is booting up right now. Copy him over. Boop, boop. There we go. And let me erase this. I don't know how I got two streams going, man. Cisco to the guy, you got the book. That's what's up, man. You gonna get the CCMP book as well, man? Because I know you on the CCMP level, you know. You you make it a six figure salary over there and stuff. We gotta get to your level over there. But y'all check out my man uh Cisco to the guy. That's his channel right there. Let's uh I think we ready, man. Let's see. Router one. 
And he's still he's still waking up right now. And he's like, man, it's eight o'clock Eastern Sta Eastern Standard Time. What are we doing, man? Let me uh let me do this. Let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and cable this up because I haven't this is not the topology we use for the other lab today. So I'm gonna have router one, FA00, powered up to connected up to switch. Okay, he is cabled up. Perfect. Beautiful. I just be prepared and don't even know it. Alright, so task one. I think we only got four tasks, so we should be able to knock this out real quick. Port security is a fundamental skill. A common denial of service technique used to cripple switch networks is map flooding. Excuse me. Uh, I stuffed my face at the uh, all-you-can-eat bar today, man. Yes, I really did. And I'm going to be fasting, so that kind of even the playing field, right? The objective of this lab is to continue, configure basic switch security to prevent MAC address flooding on switch ports. Uh, this is accomplished by limiting the number of MAC entries that are allowed to be learned on a port. Oh, so that's what they're doing. They, they, they setting the maximum on this. When I thought they were just going to do port security. So there's a way you could set up port security where if somebody plugs into a port, you know, uh, unauthorized, then we could shut that port down or we could just set it to like, say, restrict where it doesn't shut it down, but it doesn't pat a lot of pass the traffic to pass through from that cable that was plugged in. Right. But what they're doing with port security is. Uh, it's going to learn the MAC addresses, but you can only uh, uh, learn only a certain number amount. And that's what we're going to do. We're, uh, we're going to set what's called the, uh, the maximum, amount, uh, a maximum uh, amount of MAC addresses that switch port is going to learn. So let's say we plug up something to this port right here. Boop, right? And we'll give him a, a green light right there. Right? And he lights up. Right? And then he learns the MAC addresses is, is AAA or whatever or AAAAA, BBBBB, right? And then we can say, okay, this is the only MAC address that you can allow on this port, right? That's the maximum amount. Maybe we can set two. We can set to, for it to learn three or four. Well, we'll get to that and, uh, and we'll see what you do. Uh, we'll get further into that. Task one, configure host names on switch one or router one. Y'all know how to do that, right? I'm pretty sure y'all know how to do that. Uh, if you've been tuned into the network, bro, you know how to configure a host name. So that's router one, obviously, this guy. And he's switch one, right? But y'all know. I still go over the fundamentals. I don't care if, if you're new to this stuff, I go over it anyway, right? You do configure terminal, you type in host name, switch one, right? Now he's switch one, but I already saved it on there, so that's why he's already switched one, right? Just in case nobody don't know how to do that. So uh, task number two, create VLAN 10 on switch one, which is basically this right here, right? VLAN 10 on switch one, and assign the port FA02, so put that port right there into VLAN 10 that we just created, right? Uh, as an access port. So let's go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to do it, then just follow along. Go to global config mode. We say interface FA02. Anybody got a question so far? My, your interfaces might be different, right? Mine is 102 in this case, right? Uh, six figures equals high value, man. That's what's up, man. Look at that with Joseph B with his uh, red pill speak over there. <laughs> Professor Black Ops. He said, what is up? What's going on, Professor Black Ops? In the building. That's another channel y'all should check out if y'all want to get into uh, cybersecurity and stuff like that, man. He got an excellent channel. So let's go ahead uh, and configure VLAN 10. Exit out of that bad boy. No, we didn't even do this. Let me show y'all something, right? Let me show y'all the VLAN database. I think it's already in there, so let me delete that, right? Just in case nobody don't know about this. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure some of y'all do, but let's see. Uh, DIR flash, right? We do have one in here. We do have one in here. So we need to delete this, because y'all know I'll be reusing my switches and stuff like that, so. There's probably some, some configs in there that I don't want y'all to see right now. So delete from the flash VLAN.dat, right? We're going to delete that file. So now there's, there should theoretically be no defaults in there or no VLANs in here except for the default ones, right? So VLAN, I could have done brief, but oh, it didn't do that. Probably because I got to uh, see, that's what I wanted to delete. I wanted to delete those and show y'all something, but that didn't work. Maybe because, let's see, DIR flash. Did it get rid of it? Let's see, let's see. It did get rid of it. So VLAN brief. I think you gotta reboot for that happen. Alright, let's let me just go ahead and get rid of everything manually. At least y'all know how to do that now, right? Don't VLAN 10, 20, 30. Anybody know why that didn't that didn't remove? Because I thought you would uh if you delete the VLAN.dat file, that deletes the entire database. Cisco to the guy. <laughs> I'm just messing up. Uh, I didn't delete it. Interesting. No, that's a that's a new one I just created. All right, so now show VLAN brief. 
All right, those are gone, right? So now we're gonna create VLAN 10, name it sales, and put FA02 in it now, right? And I think we're gonna have to do a uh, an SVI as well. So confaf terminal. Uh, what is the link to the first block talk channel? Uh, good question. Let me pull that up. Yeah, shout out to Professor Blackoff, man. Man, listen, I had a busy day. It seemed like the same thing we have with Josh. I don't, I don't get, I get reminded for the things that y'all been pointing out to me until y'all pop up in my chat. <laughs> Professor Blackoff's probably like, man, did you open up that damn uh, Excel spreadsheet? Not yet, fam. But uh, yeah, had had so been so busy today, today, man. Didn't took my mom out for late Mother's Day. That's how behind I am, man. Today was Mother's Day for me. But uh, let's see, let's uh. We gonna get to this VLAN. I know y'all know how to do VLANs anyway, so y'all chill out. <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta shout out my peoples over here. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's Professor Black Ops channel. If y'all want to get into cybersecurity and stuff like that, all right. So let me, let me get back into this. All right, so VLAN ten, right? Now we created him a name, and y'all already seen it, right? Same name sales, and that's the sales VLAN. We can verify our work with show VLAN brief, obviously. And then we need to put that port in this VLAN, right? So that port in this VLAN, right? Y'all know how to do that. I'm sure y'all do. And if you don't, then just follow along, right? Uh, interface FA102 in my case, right? Some of y'all might be different. Remember, if you're using Packet Tracer or even G or whatever, your interfaces might be different. I know I say that, it sounds like a broken record, but I just keep reminding people, how come I don't have a 02 on my Switch? Like, what? it might be different because you have different slot numbers, right? You could have... Uh, more ports on your switch you might have a different mount a different model a different platform uh so that's why they're not gonna be exactly the same so switch port access vlan 10 that puts that port in that vlan we can verify that with the same command show vlan brief uh and remember what i said when you're verifying something try to use at least two different show commands other than show run right so we did that with show vlan brief another way we can verify it with is show uh interface uh fa no my bad <laughs> what was i thinking yes that was it uh, interface fa st 102 and then you add a switch port keyword at the end and that should let you know don't he let you know yeah he does right there that lets you know it's another way to verify what vlan that port is in right so that's another way try to at least two two different show commands that was task two right yes Oh, we got to make it an access port. So we did, we did uh, put it in uh, in VLAN 10, but we didn't make it an access port. But by default, it is negotiating dynamic auto, but we want to hard code it as a, an access port. And you know what that is, right? That means it's just one VLAN that's going to be allowed on here. And we use that for typically for access or end devices, really. So configure terminal interface FA102 interface. Uh, FAST 102. Right? Oh, I forgot the slash right there. Uh, let me see here. All right, anybody got any questions or anything so far? I know this is this lab. This is this is like a simple lab to be honest with you. Uh, they gave this what? Uh, eight out of ten difficulty. Uh, I mean, well, I guess it depends on. Let me not do. Let me say that. It depends on your level, right? So, but. Uh, Y'all know, we, we damn near halfway through the book. So this, this should be a simple lab for y'all. If not, then just ask questions. We got a bunch of smart people in the chat room if I can't get to it. So we want to put this as an access port with switch port mode access. Right? Remember what it said before? What what it was operating in? It was operating in... Uh, it is down. Operational mode is down. The administrative mode is dynamic auto. So it'll negotiate with what the other side if it... Um, well, that's what this is. If it's trunking, it'll negotiate. If the other side is trunking. So like if we set this up as a trunk, then this will theoretically become a trunk. But if we hard code it as an access port, it's not gonna negotiate. So we do that, switch port mode access, and then take a look at it. So interface uh, FAST102, and then switch port. I know, I know, basic LAN switching stuff here. So operational port is down. Is he down? interesting maybe because oh you know why this port this side right here is down that's why the router 
So once we bring that up, it'll bring the operational mode. It, you'll we'll see the difference, right? So right now it is static access. Before the mode was dynamic auto. So it'll kind of like it'll change on the fly. That's what the word dynamic means, right? So it'll change, right? Uh, but right now it's static access. So no matter what what the other side is doing, it's gonna stay as an access port. And it is down now because that side is down. Right? And we're looking at this one right here. Let me get rid of all this right in here. Look like a third grade over here, right? Uh, what else we got going on here? So it's not trunking. Well, that was pretty much it for task two, man. We only got four tasks, man. We'll knock this out. Let's knock this out. Configure task three is configure IP address 10001, which is, it says 10002 on here, but in the book he says 10001, right? No, that's why. He says on router ones, FA00. So he basically wants us to do this interface with that IP address. So I got to go to router one right now which I didn't do yet, right? So global config mode, interface. Uh, is it FA00 on mine? Let's see. Yes, it is. So he says to configure the IP address 10 triple or 001, right? So IP address 10.0.0.1. Subnet mask of slash 30, which is 255.255.255. What? Y'all know that last octet? Anybody? Somebody? You sure that. What is the last octet for slash 30 subnet? Uh, Professor Blastoff said, you good, just a little extra. <laughs> I know, my, when I be playing with my daughter, man, she just be having me running around and stuff, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is uh, FA00, last octet. Last octet. While y'all get that going, I'm going to do switch two's vlan 10 interface that svi right there so i'm gonna go to switch one rather go to global config mode interface vlan 10 ip address s move got it correct that's right 252.252 so that's what i needed 252 and uh notice it's not coming up so i need to no shut it to bring them up show ip interface brief and he's up up so that guy is up and then uh, we need to work on this guy right here, that VLAN, interface VLAN 10, that SVI, right? And notice this guy comes up too. So let's take a look at the switch port uh, characteristics here. So interface FA ST102 switch port. Uh, static access now, right? The operational mode is static access as well remember it was down before All right this is what it looked like before static access down negotiate off now it's static access access negotiate native but it's not trunking so it don't even matter right so because this is these are good this is an access port right here this is an access port so what was we doing interface vlan 10 is up so this svi it's kind of like uh it's our router it's kind of like a routered interface we could use that as a management port if we wanted to so if we wanted to like ssh into the device we could use it using that ip address right there uh verify that router one can ping switch one and vice versa so basic connectivity right that was task three still so we got router one ping this guy right here or theoretically that guy right there this interface and see, we got some basic connectivity, right? So go to back to router one. We can look at his uh, routing table and see what he got going on. He knows about the 10 network, which is this right here, right? So theoretically, you should be able to ping it, right? Ping 10.0.0.2, uh, 10.0.0.2. .0 Pray to the network gods. And the, the prayers are not being answered right now. Did we do the IP addressing on VLAN 10, interface VLAN 10? Let's see. I don't think I did. So IP interface brief. I did not. See there? This is what you get for being a little extra. You forget, you forget little tips like little little things like that, right? So let's go to VLAN 10. Uh interface VLAN 10. And that's probably why we ain't got no connectivity. So IP address 10.0.0.2. Subnet mass is the same thing to as uh, that uh S as smooth said, right? Dot 252. 
And then let's see if Rider One can ping that guy and get on our knees. Pray to the network gods. And we got a reply. Good. We did get one uh, one drop ping packet right there, but that's because of that arc. We'll ping it again, and now we get 100% uh, connectivity as opposed to 80%. So we good there. Task number four, final task. Configure port security, what we came to do, on port, on port FA02. So we need to configure port security on this bad boy right here. On switch one, so that only one MAC address is allowed to be learned on that interface. Y'all know what about LAN switching, right? Basically, a switch learns about uh, MAC addresses and keeps it in its MAC address table, right? Right, but it does it through each port. So if he learns an interface, I mean, he if he learns an, uh, a MAC address through that interface, he adds it to his database, right? Same thing with this port, that port, that port, that port, etc. Right? He can he can learn as many as he want, but we're gonna set this port right here. To learn and remember only one MAC address. Well, just one MAC address. Yeah, we think, oh, yeah, then it's going to make him a dumber device, right? Because he's going to uh, kind of like minimize his uh, MAC address table. Well, we do this for port security reasons to mi mitigate things like MAC address flooding, which is what the book said, right? Um, that's a way of like, it's kind of like a denial of, denial of service attack, right? Because you can flood these switches with MAC addresses. It's just going to try to remember all of them and then just kind of like get mind blown well port security is one way to kind of like circumvent that problem right so uh we got to go to fa02 we know that on switch one so we got to go to that port right there and set up port security y'all know how to do that right if not then just follow along so go to global config mode interface fa102 uh, again your interfaces might be different y'all run me that like button if y'all like what y'all see so far man uh so we go to that interface and uh, most of the switch port commands, I mean switch port commands, I just gave it away. Most of the port security commands start with the keyword switch port, right? And then from there, you have all your options. You want to shut it down or restrict or or just shut down altogether, right? So you do switch port and you'll see all, these, all your functions right here, right? For a switch port. We can set up like we did before. Set it up as an access mode. We can set it up as a trunk port. Uh, we can choose the different type of trunks. Remember there's dot one q there's ISL, which is a uh, pretty much gone by the wayside it's a cisco proprietary trunking protocol but nowadays we use dot one q right um we can set up private vlans which is kind of a, a niche feature more of a ccmp topic but uh all these things we can do but what we can do today you guessed it port security right so switch port port security and what other features can we do we question mark for context sensitive help we can set the aging commands right because what it does is it learns mac addresses right and if it sees a specific MAC address hasn't been used in a while, it'll age out. So you'd be like, oh, it, it kind of like forgets about it, you know, kind of like bad memories in a way, right? So it removes that, that's the aging timer. We can set it, we can set that, we can modify that if we wanted to. But what we came to do here was maximum. So what was the key word here or the sentence here? It said, configure port security on FA02 so that only one MAC address is allowed to be learned on that interface. We look at all of this stuff right here. That tells us right there that that feature right there is going to let us know uh, that's how we're going to do it. But we could do this too. We could do port security by itself without none of these features. It just kind of like turns on port security, but with no extra like configurations. You can set the violation mode, the maximum, which we're going to going to do, aging, etc. Right. But if we do just just port security, just just turns on port security, enables that feature with no other special functions to it. So we just do switch port, port security, and then from here maximum, and put. The maximum allowed we said one that i believe is by default anyway so i don't even know why the hell he gave us this he could have said something like two or something but um i don't even think there's a, is there a way to yeah there is a way i was gonna say a way for for me to uh demonstrate that but uh preference backup said port security for this corporate device no unknown device correct uh, what I wanted to do is demonstrate the shutdown, but he'll probably do that in the next lab. I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, no, this is my first time doing this lab. I mean, this particular lab from this book, but in the event of port security configuration violations where more than one MAC address is observed on that interface, the switch should shut down the interface, shut the interface down. That's what I was asking. I was thinking, wondering about. Okay, so he said it, said it to one, and then he said, if there is a violation, that's observed on this interface, it should shut the interface down. So we go back to these port security functions and you'll see right there, the violation mode. 
that will let us uh, modify that feature. So we do source port, port security, violation, and from here you got three options. Protect, restrict, shut down. Obviously they said shut down because in case there's a violation, we want it to shut down, right? There's also protect and restrict. One of them allows traffic to go through, but it at least gives you a warning. Like, hey, there was a violation here. The other one stops the traffic from going through and it also lets you know, hey, there was a violation here. Um, and then shut down, it just shuts the port down. Like it warns you and it just doesn't allow traffic to go through, right? And I believe protect allows the traffic to go through but gives you the warning and restrict. And this is why I like going back to the fundamentals. I'm not going to uh, pretend that I don't. So let's go ahead and Google that. <laughs> Protect and restrict. Let's see the violation uh, switch ports. Can't remember which is which. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I remember. I believe protect. I believe protect allows the traffic to go through and at least gives you the warning. Restrict doesn't even allow it to go through at all and uh, gives you a warning though. Let's see. Let's see. Switch port. Anybody remember the difference? Put security violation uh, restrict versus protect. We all know what shutdown does. It shuts it down altogether with explanations. We should either look, let's look at the Cisco white paper. Let's look at the Cisco white paper. Be official here. Put security violation. Anybody figure that answer? Not yet? All right, so I'm pulling up the white paper and we'll see. Uh, violation. Modes. Remember the modes? Restrict versus restrict versus protect. I always get them two mixed up. There they go, right there. I'm trying to see if I can pull it up before anybody else says the answer in the chat room over there. Uh, protect drops packets with an unknown source address until you remove a sufficient number of secure MAC addresses to drop below the minimum. Restrict drops packets with an unknown source MAC address until you remove it to drop low. It causes the count counter to increment. Okay, and this we had a lot of today at work. At least I did, because I was uh, managing some switches. But one of them gives you just a warning though. That don't really tell me which one. And one of them, it, this, none of them tells you which one allows traffic to go through or not. I've never used any of the other options aside from shut down. Yeah, me too. That's how we set it up. We just set it up to shut down. But I just like going over the fundamentals. Uh, and I'm just trying to remember which one. Because one of them allows traffic to go through and gives you the warning. And increments the counter. And one of them doesn't even allow the traffic to go through. But increments the counter also. Which is, I guess, the warning. So that's what it is. So then restrict kind of gives you the warning. Restrict adds the violation counter. So I guess we could test that theory out. But anyways, they said shutdown mode. That's, the, uh, that's, that's what they asked for anyway. We know that. So switch port, port security violation shutdown, right? Verify your configuration with port security commands on Cisco iOS, right? We know there's show commands, right? So we are gonna do show port security uh, let's see, what is it? Is it just address, interface? Oh, okay. So you just do port, so port security and pull up everything. And that is the only interface that's, uh, has port security enabled, obviously. And if we had a violation, these counters right here will increment. See that? I was just trying to remember the difference between protect and restrict. And I believe restrict is the one that, that kind of not really gives you a warning, but at least increments this counter shutdown will also increment the counter but also shut the port down like hold up we got a violation here man we need to block some of this traffic right here well not necessarily the traffic but at least the uh minimize the the mac addresses that are coming up on that port so yeah that's pretty much it for that lab man let me see what else they had here y'all want me that like button man make sure you subscribe to your boy notes if you wanted to test your port security configuration which is what I wanted to do. You can simply change the MAC address of FA00 on router one, and then you would see a port security violation. Beautiful. 
And does he show us how to do that? Yes, he does. So let's go ahead and do that and see. And let's watch that in action, right? So let's go to Router 1. And we are going to sort of spoof the MAC address here, right? We'll go to Router 1, interface, FA00. We're going to say switch port, I mean, my bad, MAC address. Let's see. Does mine support that? It does. Hyphen MAC address. There you go. And then we're going to give him a fake MAC address. He put that. I'm going to put the same exact one he put in. B, C, uh, C0. And we're going to see this violation occur here, right? Don't worry. You're going to see no alarms or anything like that. 2300. Uh, okay. So, remember, we only had one MAC address that we learned. That's the one that we pinged coming from this side. Once he did that, he learned that MAC address. But now we're going to spoof this MAC address coming from there. And then he should get a violation. And that's when the alarms are sound right over here, right? Get rid of this shit. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, change that MAC address to see what happens, right? Press enter. Go to switch one. Boom, we got a violation. You see there? Error disable. You know what error disable is, right? Basically, it, it's kind of like the warning. It kind of like puts, disables the port. And uh, right there, it says P secure violation occurred. So we basically sounded the alarm on this interface right here because we changed the MAC address on this bad boy right there because that's he's not familiar with it and that's how port security works i like how they showed us how to do that man now if you want to uh you know do some mac address spoofing you know how to do that right <laughs> you learn it, don't just don't tell them you learned it from the network bro. as can be seen in the output above the violation counter has incremented and the interface is now in error disabled mode which basically means it's been shut down to a port security violation to bring this back up you need to issue a shutdown and a no shut basically yeah shut it down bring it back up that's how you do it uh and i actually had to do that today at work so and that was because uh i misconfigured a trunk interface uh the ones that we were imaging some computer labs so let's go to switch one and see we did get these syslog messages to let us know the, uh, that a port security violation occurred right but we want to go dirt deeper into that violation we do show port security and we'll see the violation count right here because remember it was at zero right we met we spoofed that mac address and now we got the inc the the counter that got incremented and the violation shut down right there so uh it, it can uh, it, it can only learn one mac address on that interface right there so we have a second one now and that's what happened right there right and uh current address count is one zero because we he doesn't remember the original one so that's why that one that original one is gone oh uh, anybody got any questions or anything like that before we move on to the next one we're gonna go more yeah let's go ahead and do one more man the next one only got four tasks as well same topology different uh ip addressing we're gonna do some advanced port security it's lab number 100 in case you guys are following on for the first time this is the lab guy we use 101 labs cisco ccna version 4 Yes, 101 labs, and we're at lab number 100. So we're almost done with this book, but guess what? There's about 20 more labs in this book. And uh, you can get a copy from 101labs.net, or there's a link in the description box below. It is an affiliate link, so I do get a copy. Of, or not copy, but like I get some uh, some commission. If you do get it from there, uh, let's go ahead and uh, y'all see the violations. Anybody else got any questions or anything so far? Or did I lose you? Or did uh, anything clear anything up? Or do you want me to go over? Because I want to, I always forget what the difference between the two. Port, uh, violation, y'all give me a second. Yeah, I'm going to reboot real quick. And then uh, we'll move on to the next lab. Reload. Yeah, give me a second. For a second here. All right, so we're gonna reload, switch one. No. What are you guys using? Are you using uh, Even G? My oh, man, uh, shout out to my man Andrit out of uh, Kosovo. I haven't seen him on the stream lately. This dude been trying to get me to use Even G for the longest, and I was like, "All right, man, you know what? Let me go ahead and do this, man. Did it for one lab, and I'm back in my hardware. <laughs> Dusted off my routers, and I said, let me use this stuff, man. I, I just like using my my hardware, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload router one. And while that is reloading, I let's take an intermission, and I'm going to go over, figure out a way to remember 
the difference between the two. Restrict and uh, restrict and protect. Protect obviously starts with a P. Did he reboot yet? He's rebooting. Switch one is rebooting. Again, we only got two devices for this lab right here. Difficulty rating is six out of 10. So this one should be easy as well. Pretty much same topology, right? So if you weren't paying attention to the first lab, now is your chance to catch up. And y'all know what I say. It is a lot easier, not a lot easier, but it's, it's, it's gonna be better for you to return, retain this stuff if you're doing it hands-on along with me. Don't be like what I used to do, man. Just kind of play CBT nuggets in the background and and uh, don't participate, man. Bro, I'm just asking y'all to participate. Not for the sake of network, bro. But for you, man. I know there's somebody in here that's just like, man, I, this dude makes it fire, man. He makes it fun to learn. I know if I, I'll learn if I at least do it along with this guy. Switch one is booting up. Y'all give me a second. We'll have a quick intermission here. Any questions so far? All right, switch one is booted up. So again, this is pretty much the same topology, right? Switch one, router one. I believe he's cabled up the same exact way. We are going to lab number, not 99, but 100. And I need to go over this part right here before, I wanna to try to figure out a quick way to remember this right here, right? I'll protect. Which one? He 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 increments the, the counter value. So he kind of gives you the warning. Restrict. Hmm. They just sound they just sound the same is the thing. That's the only thing. Hmm. Easy way to remember it. That's the only difference between. So these two guys right here, they're pretty much the same, but he increments the security counter. He does not. And I think they both allow traffic to pass through. If I'm not mistaken. It is what it is. I'll figure out a way tonight. Anywho, task number one, configure the host names, which we've already gotten, right? Switch one is already switch one. Router one is already router one. Y'all with me? Uh, anybody any questions or anything so far? I know we just started, right? Task two, create VLAN 10, which obviously he's already in there. Cause we did that from the last lab and I did not delete it. So let's let's verify though. Show VLAN brief. And the sales VLAN is already in there. We're just gonna put FA02 in that VLAN, right? Or in my case, interface FA102. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN uh, 10, right? Uh, 
That was task two. We're going to knock this out in like two minutes, right? Task three was to configure IP address 172.16.0.1 slash 27. So on router one. So basically, we got to do this interface and that SVI right there or interface. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Go to router one. Go to config mode. Interface FA102. No, my bad. Zero slash zero. Your interfaces might be different. 172.16.16.0.1 slash 27 is dot 224, right? Am I correct in saying that? Let's verify our work with what? Do show my new uh, favorite protocol, uh, favorite show command, show protocols. 16.0.1 slash 27. So that's correct. Uh, let's bring him up because right now he's admin down. So no shut. That should bring up that port right there and bring up this port as well. Right, we'll see, we'll go to switch and we'll see that it comes up. Let's create this S S SVI right here. We'll go to global config mode, interface VLAN 10. IP address is 172.16.0.2. Subnet mask of 2.224, so 255.255.224. Uh, no shut that bad boy, right? I think he's already no shut, right? Or maybe he wasn't. Let's do a show IP interface brief. Verify our work. Exclude unassigned. 1602. So he is correct. Can you do show protocols on the switch? I never done that before. Yes, you can. Beautiful. Ah, well, it just looks a lot more. It's just, it just has a little bit more points. Guess I never really ran that command on the switch. It's the first time I did it. Now I know. Knows half the battle. Y'all remember that, right? G.I. Joe. Let's see if router one can ping switch one. Uh, this guy to that guy. Test can basic connectivity, right? P I N G. Do you know what that means? Router one, ping one seven two dot sixteen dot zero dot two. Get on our knees. Pray to the network gods. Press enter, and it looks like we're gonna have some troubleshooting to do. No, we don't. Sixty percent complete. We dropped two art packets right here, right? We don't like that shit. We we like to see five exclamation points, right? So we'll try it again. Ping, and we got a reply. Good to go. That was task three. Task four, we gonna wrap this up. We might be able to do lab number one on one, man. Not at, at this rate, reboot it and do it again, right? The other one is advanced static switch port security. We do we we'll do port security all night, right? Uh. Task four, this is the final task right here. Configure port security on FA02 on switch one. So we gotta go to switch one, right? What type of port security, right? There's, there's, there's plenty uh, plenty of types, right? So we gotta go to FA102. What type of port security? He said, so that any MAC address learned on that interface are written to the switch's NVRAM. There's a lot to digest there, right? And if, if you're new to this stuff, you'll be like, what the hell is he saying right here? Well. Let me break it down in my terms, right? So that any MAC address, we know the MAC addresses, right? Layer 2 address, the one that has the hexadecimal number and it's got like 12 digits or and numbers in it, right? Um, that's the MAC address. Every device in the world has a MAC address, right? And uh, it's all unique. Right? You, there's no such thing as two MAC addresses that are identical in the world, unless you spoof it somehow. So that any MAC address is learned on this interface right here. Anything that's learned on that interface right there is written to the switch's NVRAM. What's NVRAM? non-volatile random access memory basically the memory that kind of like uh that stays in in this switch right here so anything he learns he has this thing called the nvram non-volatile which means he does not forget it basically anything that's written to that we want to make sure that um it is it, it he remembers he he remembers that mac address is associated with this port right here right so if he learns you know mac address a b C D one two three four whatever on that port. When you shut the when you shut this switch down, bring it back up. He's gonna remember he learned that MAC address on this right here. How do we do that? With the keyword sticky. So you go to switch port port security mode and you do sticky. And I'll show you how to do that, right? So uh <clears throat> remember we said we gotta do port security with switch port port security. So switch port port security. 
that basically kind of like enables port security. I don't know what the, the command alone does though, because really all the features come after that command. When you press smart like this, this is where all the other features come in. We wanted the sticky feature. The sticky feature comes from, uh, where does it come from? I think it comes up from maximum. So switch port, port security, maximum, I believe sticky. Nope, let me see, let me question mark. No, he's not there. I believe it just goes under, let's see. I guess it's time to guess now, right? I think it's right there. Switch port, port security, sticky? Violation, sticky? No. Maximum, sticky? MAC address, sticky, I think. Yeah, switch port, port security, MAC address, and then sticky. There you go. So now, any switch he learns, I mean, any MAC address he learns, he sticks it to that, pretty much that port right there, and, uh, and he remembers it. So anybody else that, port, that, that comes into this port right here, uh, it'll be considered a violation if it's not one that is uh, that was learned on this right here. So if he learned the MAC address ABC1234, that is the only MAC address that's going to be associated with this port. I know I got like eight arrows coming in here, but that's just to let y'all know. So if we have another, uh, like let's say we got a computer, right? Let me draw this little laptop right here. And he plugs up to it, but he got a different MAC address. Well, guess what? That's going to be a violation because he doesn't have this MAC address right here. That's what sticky is, right? So we press enter. And I want to kind of demonstrate that. I think the way I could do that is if I unplug this router and plug up, I can plug up a laptop and show y'all a port security violation. Yeah, I should do that because I don't think he's going to do that in here, is he? Let's see. He, he kind of does. But anyways, uh, so I did six sticky, right? And uh, damn, I should have showed y'all what the show running, the running config looks like before I did that. Uh, to the guy, I said, Mac is just sticky. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so he got it. I wasn't looking. My bad, uh, Cisco to the guy. Shout out Cisco to the guy. Uh -huh. But yeah, Mac is just sticky. I just didn't. I just needed to. Uh, yeah, add a add a dash. So now we do a show run and take a look at the configurations for that interface, which was one o one, right? So remember, we put this sticky right here. He automatically remembered the Mac address now. See there, and that's the Mac address of this guy right here. So now I can unplug this router and plug in a laptop and y'all can, so can see a port security violation. And I think maybe he may or may not have us do that, but I'll see. Uh, but now he remembers it in the NVRAM. Uh, let's see, what else he wants us to do here? The NVRAM is the startup configuration, which is basically what I was telling y'all, right? Verify your configuration with port security commands. So we verified it with the show run. And remember I said, try to you know verify stuff with stuff with show run, show commands other than show run so we did show run right there but that's almost like cheating so let's do show port security uh press enter and we'll see we have 102 which is that interface right there let me get rid of all these goddamn arrows uh this is the only one that is uh participating in port security right he learned one mac address right there and this is the maximum amount of MAC addresses that can be learned on this interface right here, right? Because we set it up to sticky. So the first one he learned, boom, he's, it stuck to his uh, to his memory. That's why they call it sticky. Uh, but I wanted to show y'all another way other than show run. We did show support security like that. What else can we do? Let's see, port security, address, interface. Let's try interface. I think we can do that. Interface, FA102. I think it's just gonna break down the other one just like this one right here. Nope, good. That's exactly what I want to see. So, right here. We that's what port security does. So you gotta do switch port port security by itself and it enables port security. But all these other extra features you gotta actually add, like sticky and all this other stuff, right? The aging timer is zero, it's set to shut down. So if we do have a violation, it's gonna shut the port down. Uh this is the maximum amount of MAC addresses being learned. Secure static address aging. I don't know what the hell that means. I might have to look that up probably do that after the stream uh see we got one sticky mac address there the last source address plus the vlan so the last source address and then we got the uh colon plus the vlan so in this case this is the last source mac address which is most likely this guy right here and i'll go in there and check right plus the vlan he learned it on he learned it on vlan 10 right remember because we put this port in vlan 10 right remember that we did it about 10 minutes ago so let's go ahead and verify that right so he was he was ending in F55E, right? So let's go to router one and verify that he is F55E, right? And I'm pretty sure he is, unless somebody in here or the ghost of Christmas past is, is standing right by my rack. So let's go see. Go to router one and uh, <clears throat> show interface 
uh, F A zero zero. Is that what I was looking for? No. Interface. Enter. Face. Bonds over there, right? Yep. So F F F five five E. So yes, I was correct, right? Because remember, the last one is the unique one. The last four of a MAC address. In case y'all don't know, the last four of a MAC address is is the unique number. Well, they're all unique. The whole number is unique, but it's usually the last one that is unique. Uh. So yeah, that was it. Let's go ahead and unplug the router and see if I can violate. Um, hmm, I should probably grab my daughter's laptop <laughs> and, and do a violation with that. Let's do that. No. Uh. What am I going to do it with? I want to do something real quick. I'm a power on this router. And, and uh, we got PS in the building. Shout out PS. Good seeing you, man. Thank you for tuning in. We just did two poor security labs, man. I'm going to have this router right here. Another router with a different MAC address. So y'all can see what happens with a port, vi port security violation. I know y'all seen one in the last port security lab. But uh, for anybody that's new here, they'll see what a port, uh, port security violation looks like. So... I'm going to go ahead and unplug this guy right here, router 1. And then I'm going to plug up another router. Let me plug up a better looking router than the other than that potato one. Potato looking one. Hey. Right. Boop. 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 We're almost done here, y'all. We're, we're almost done here. And I like drawing this shit. Yeah. Got my daughter and stuff. Uh... So I'm gonna unplug him. Plug up another device. Where's he at? He is right here. Isn't he plugged up somewhere? No, he's not. Of course not. He didn't want to be plugged up because he knew I was gonna demonstrate poor security. Damn it. 102. So we did unplug it right there. Let's see what happens if we plug up a device with another MAC address. Y'all ready? Three, two, one. Oh, you know what? I think he's no shut, so probably don't even matter. Let's see. Lee, I want to shut down. Might have to do something else. Let's see if I can find another device that I can power on real quick. Let me just get another device real quick. Let me just get this laptop that I got sitting right here. Let me get this laptop. Right here. So I got a laptop instead. With obviously a different MAC address. Plugged him up to 102. Power him on. And... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. PS have to watch replay. Yeah, man, it's all good, man. Uh, we about to wrap this up anyway. I think I'm gonna save the next lab for uh, for tomorrow. Gotta take my daughter to bed and stuff. We just gonna watch a uh, put security violation occur on that interface right there. Wait for it. Wait for it. I know I got him plugged up. Yeah, I see him. Does he? Does the Nick card lighting up over here? I plugged him up to 102. Indeed. Let's see. I thought the net car would have been powered on before the. Oh yeah, there you go. He he powering up right now. So let's see. So again, I plugged up the laptop. This guy right here. He got a skull and bone with skull and crossbones. Bloop. Plugged him up right here. And still waiting on this violation to occur. This is the slowest goddamn hacker. I think he's going off of Wi Fi or something. Let's verify. Let's see. I plugged him up into the right port, FA 102. Let me see what's going on here. Maybe the Nick card is shut down. Oh, he's going off of Wi Fi, I believe. And let's do this. I know y'all seen, uh, seen uh, port security before. It went down. It did. Yeah, it did go down, but um, it, it should have. We should have had a violation. Physical lab for port security is best. I agree. Ugh. Man, that, that, that 
switch went down. That's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened. I must have unplugged it on the pro on the process. <laughs> Let's do it one more time, and then and then uh, we'll call it a night. I unplugged it. That's what happened. See, now this is when physical lab is not best for port security because that wouldn't have happened in, on GNS3 or, or anything. Yeah, I, I must have tripped or something. Because look, it, it shut off altogether. Unbelievable. We'll, we'll run that lab one more time on the switch, though. The router's still up, isn't he? Yep, he's up. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I know, Pete. I'm sitting here trying to demonstrate a, uh, a port security violation, and then I tripped over the damn cord, man. Jesus. The network, duh, in the building. <laughs> we'll run that one more time from my man Pete S. over there. I'm pretty sure you've seen what a port violation looks like, but... Uh, anyway, y'all want me that like button? Next lab we're going to do is going to be one more port security lab. We'll do that one tomorrow, though. It is lab number 100. Yeah, 100. So, yeah, we're, we're obviously almost done with this book. It's lab, it's 101 labs, Cisco CCNA, and uh, we're at lab 100. And there's going to be about, I want to say, about 15 to 20 more labs left. Troubleshooting, some TAC acts. Let's see what else we got. We got some challenge labs, uh, CDP banner messages, and NTP. So network time, pro network time protocol, uh, network address translation. Uh, we got some IPv6 static routes, DHCP interview, interview land routing, RIP version 2. Y'all know how I feel about RIP. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a NAT pool. So there's a couple more about... Uh, bonus challenge labs once we wrap this book up we're going to move on to the ccmp topic so a little bit more difficult right more topologies more advanced topics just more fun and more cisco as my man kelvin tran would say over there uh can't have a switch that turned off <laughs> seriously man like what, what is going on here man you would think the network duh over here would have at least gotten his stuff over here on on point here man what, what, what's wrong with me man did I have was the router? Let me make sure that router's plugged up. We're gonna we're gonna set that router to sticky one more time, and then I'm gonna. How did I unplug that? That pisses me off, man. Let me see. Okay. Well, at least y'all got the lecture part, right? We'll do that, and then uh, then I'll put that. Then I'll put this laptop. Now now that I have the laptop queued up, then I can put my daughter to bed. And tomorrow, what I got? I got to finish imaging that computer lab. We got to do that like one row at a time. It is crazy, man, because last time we took down the Wi-Fi <laughs> because we was uh, we get, we tried to get them to image. What did they say? Like 20 computers at the same time. They were like 60 gigabits of, of, of data each, man. And, and uh, this is a school system. So this was going on when registration was going down. And it was just like, yo, y'all got to figure out another way to do this, man. So we try to uh, get these computers re-imaged uh, using the landline. So or ethernet rather all right so we're gonna set port security one more time on that port and then we'll call it a night interface fa 102 right we said switch port access vlan 10 switch port mode access right and we said switch port so i guess this is a kind of like a review right so for anybody that wasn't paying attention the first time switch port port security enables port security right and we said switch port uh port security uh we said maximum or mac address sticky right Right, so now we'll see him learn that address, right, with show uh, port security uh, FA or oh, interface, interface FA 102. And we see he did learn that. That was FFE, right? That was this guy right here. All right, so now we can actually unplug the damn router. I mean, the, uh, yeah, unplug the router. And uh, boop. And now let's see if we can plug up. I hope he stays on that time. So the router went down. Yes, it went, I mean, the switch went down, that interface. Now let's see if we can plug up the laptop to FA-102. And uh, right there. 102 came up. 
Is he going to shut down? Is he going to violate? What's going on here? We turned on poor security, didn't we? There it is, right there. Boom. Poor security, violation two, all right? We got level two message, right? That lets us know it's uh, not necessarily emergency, but critical, I think, or something like that, right? Remember, uh, the syslog message is either, it's between, it's a level between uh, zero through seven. And zero meaning it's like a catastrophic emergency. And seven is kind of like uh, just for debugging purposes. Six is informational. I forgot what all order they're in, right? But this is a level two message, so it's pretty serious. P secure violation, a security violation occurred caused by MAC address uh this guy right here which is not the one ending in f55e but this laptop right here the guy with the crawl the crooked ass skull and crossbones so that's pretty much a port security violation what i tried to do before i tripped over the damn cable over there we got network duh in the house and my laptop and then my phone died it's time to put my daughter to bed y'all want me that like button y'all make sure y'all subscribe we're going to call it a night. Uh, y'all any other questions? Make sure y'all join the Discord server. Uh, if not, let me go ahead and give y'all the invite. Boop, boop, boop. If you guys have any other, like, streaming ideas or anything like that, so, important, so in production, would we use port security for routers, etc.? Not just for specific in-hosts on access ports. More than likely, you would you would put it on an access port, at least in the at least in the environment that we use them in. But that's because I work in a school system where there's the the network closets are like they're dynamic. We got people coming in and out of there. We got security that's coming in, plugging in cameras and stuff like that. Um, they do like live show production and stuff like that. So these people that that uh, they have all of these this audio gear, they're just plugging stuff like all the time, man. So. If we have some empty ports, they're like, oh, we need internet access. And they'll just plug into an empty port of one of our switches. And it's like, no, you, no, you're not supposed to do that. So we set up port security on our end devices. You don't necessarily want to put it on, on, uh, on uh, devices that you have routers plugged up to. But more than likely, you're going to plug it up to uh, uh, put port security on ports that are empty, unused ports. So you want to shut them down, really. But if you want to, if you could put port security on some ports, then yeah, that, that's probably the best thing to do too. So, uh, but more than likely you're going to, you're going to see them on, on access ports. Uh, Dave W said cable management. Yes, you're right, man. You know what happened? It's just that this switch, I've been using it a lot in my live streams and stuff like that. So I, instead of just leaving the plug hanging, I kind of leave it just a little bit when I'm ready to power it on. All I got to do is just push it in. Cause remember switches don't have on off buttons. You got to go by the cord, right? So and I think I must have just like tapped it really lightly because when I saw the lights weren't even on, when Cisco 2, the guy pointed it out, he's like, hey, man, it went down. I realized that I didn't even have the cable plugged up all the way in. So anyway, uh, yeah, y'all run me with that like button. Let me get you guys an invite to the Discord server. If you're not if you're not a part of the Discord server, we're going to wrap it up tonight. Tomorrow again, we'll do a port security and one more lab. Mm, or maybe we might even go all night. Who knows? For now, comment, like, subscribe to the network. Bruh.